does C-51 and all of these other laws they say is to defend Canada? But what is this Canada? It is, this is it a lush land that feeds our families and our communities? Is it the water that quenches our thrust? Is it the air that watches over us? Or is it the stories that keep us together? Is it our families? Is it our communities of people that hold on tight through thick and thin to somehow survive over despair? Because if that is Canada, then I love Canada. Then you love Canada. A love that forces us to ask questions, to find new places of realization and truths, <coughs> to build new worlds, better worlds, worlds that fit all of our broken selves. But there is another Canada, a rabid, immiserating Canada. A Canada that is a government, a set of laws, values, principles. A Canada that has sprung forth onto this world through the theft of indigenous land. It's birth, a bloodbath, whose stains cannot be removed by mere apologies. It burst into a world in the lives of our ancestors, striking fear, murder, stealing with impunity. This Canada created residential schools, the Hudson's Bay Company, the 60s School. And those that fought it are called terrorists. And those who simply survive it are called criminals. Like the Mohawks of Kanisataki, who for 78 days fought to protect their sacred territories from a golf course. Like the Innu people who fought for decades to stop a landing strip to be built onto their territory. Like the Lubicon Cree, the Dene, the Chippewas, the Algonquins, the Anishinaabe, and many others who are fighting this thirst, this greed for theft that Canada has. This Canada is insecure. And like any egomaniac that does not know what it is, it constantly insists how it is the best, the most generous, the most welcoming, the most merciful. It jealously guards itself against us, the rest of us. This Canada used Chinese workers to build railroads, but would not let them be reunited with their families. This Canada sent back 400 Jews on SS St. Louis to be massacred. This Canada turned away the Punjabis on the Komagata Maru to a land that was colonized. This Canada jailed the Tamils on the MV Sansi and the Ocean Lady. This Canada will imprison and detain men like Mr. Majub for 15 years without charges or trial. This Canada is so pure that it will not take the sick, the elderly, the poor, the mad, the broken, we are forever outside. And those that resist it are called criminals. And those that are simply surviving it are called illegals, immigrants. This Canada forces us to work. We are isolated in what they call jobs and we call alienation. To live means to live somewhere. And to live somewhere, we must pay rent. And we know this, we work not for the common good, but for the profit of the few. This Canada uses the bodies of those of us that move, that migrate, our labor, but insists that our humanity is so foreign that we must leave it at the door. And those that fight it, like the Canadian Union of Postal Workers starting in 1965, the BC Council of Carpenters, in 1985, the Quebec Confederation of Trade Unions in 1973, like QP, like CAW, and all of those unions like CQ who were once called terrorists. And those of us who survive it, dragging our feet, stealing from the boss sometimes, we are called criminals. This Canada is full of hate. It tells us who to love and how to love. This Canada wants to empty the streets of our bodies and our desires. It seizes as engines that birth more bodies for more work and little else. And those that resist by loving, by fucking, by singing, by dancing are called terrorists. And those that live through it are called criminals. Raided upon in Ottawa and Montreal in 75 and 76, in bathhouses in Toronto in 81, a war on queers until the 90s, and a war on sex workers that continues. This Canada wants you to vote, to select from amongst the few, but never speak of the many. 
This Canada wants you to obey. It will let you question politely and then tell you that being heard is enough. And those that resist it are called terrorists. And those that simply survive it are called criminals. This Canada jailed the communist Fred Rose in 1931. It deported anarchist and communist organizers in the 40s. It framed Dudley Laws of the Black Action Defense Committee for Human Trafficking in 1990. It carried out surgical strikes arresting community organizers in Toronto in 2010. And at this very moment, it is beating and brutalizing the students in Montreal. This Canada has no faith. All it has is a hunger for blood and a hunger for oil. One that tells it to support Israel. One that tells it to bomb Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and countless other places. And then the bodies of those Muslims who arrive here, like the ones in Project Thread in, 19, in you know, barely 10 years ago, who were called terrorists, but then were deported on immigration grounds. Like Aki Kansari, who is in jail today, and again called a terrorist, but will never be charged under those and will be deported. Like the mothers of the Somali, Somali men who are being, just, whose lives are so disrupted that they are forced to leave and they have nowhere to pay for their families. Like the men who are being held in security grounds um, whose blind mothers call us asking for support which we cannot provide. This is Canada. Do not say that this is not the Canada you know. For us, too many of us, the racialized, the impoverished, those without papers, those on watch lists, those in prison cells, this is the only Canada we know. This is your Canada. And in the hands and jails of this Canada, each of us have been terrorists. Each, is, each of us have been criminals. So today, either we proudly declare that we are terrorists, or we say that there are no terrorists. Do not ask, do not ask for C51 to be more effective. Do not ask for laws that will be more effective. Demand justice that is inclusive. Do not ask for your civil liberties. Be uncivil, be audacious, create collective freedom. Do not ask for rights from this state. Refuse the state. Do not ask for accountability over these men with guns. Do not say that CSIS needs to be more accountable. These people steal our peace. Demand that their arms be chopped off. Yes. A brutal, vicious, greedy Canada has been breathing down our necks for so long. It is our enemy. And in the words of June Jordan, let us be a menace to our enemies. <laughs> let our bodies, our songs, our words, and our deeds, in our bedrooms, our kitchens, our workplaces, these streets become audacious, uncontrolled resistance. Do not fear that you may be next. Indeed, look around and see who is already captured by this Canada and give your all for our freedom. We are many. They are few. Though we may be like worms with few resources, let us grow. For when we say attack, they will hear nothing at first. Thank you. <laughs>